Uh, hi, everybody. This is Scott McLeod with another episode of the Coronavirus Chronicles. Today, we're talking with Dave Quinn of the Menden Upton Regional School District in Massachusetts. Hi, Dave. <laughs> hey, hey, Scott. How are you? <laughs> Good. Thanks. Um, so, um, Back, yeah. I mean, Scott, my son just locked my wife out. <laughs> so this is actually perfect for the Coronavirus Chronicles. So just hang on one second. And. Yeah. That's what happens when everybody's at home with their kids, right? So good stuff. So <laughs> stay tuned, Dave will be right back. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Go upstairs. Good stuff. God. All right, you ready? You wanna start over or do you wanna keep that in there? Um, you know, I, I, think, I think, no, if we're gonna talk about the coronavirus chronicles, I think that that's, yeah. Probably a good exemplar of what families are and educators are, are gathering. Absolutely. All right, Dave. So um, tell us a little bit about how the school district has been responding so far. Um, I've got to say that, you know, crises can, while they are immensely challenging, oftentimes bring out the best in people. Uh, you know, I'm thinking like the Fred Rogers quote, like, look for the helpers. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just what our district has become. Um, teachers, administrators, everybody. It's been an all hands on deck uh, approach to this. I think we're fortunate in that um, given the resources that our, our community generously provides to us. Um, we're one-to-one -one through grades five through 12. So that transition was probably a little bit smoother, um, a little bit more rapid than, um, you know, I think for some other districts. Um, elementary, it's been a bigger adjustment, but I find that with the teachers, they've just dug in deeper, right? Um, so they've uh, embraced tools that were, were foreign to them, you know, uh, a week before. So Google Classroom, everybody jumps in on Google Classroom. Um, teachers who didn't use Seesaw before were kind of interested, but, you know, just didn't work in the schedule. Right now, I'm diving in. Um, Zoom, the ability to get everybody uh, on and comfortable with Zoom in such a short amount of time um, it was just incredible. I mean, and we're talking about pre-K through 12. So we've got mm -hmm. uh, pre-K teachers who are, are uh, affording the opportunity to um, their students. And I just think um, I'm, I'm proud of the, the effort that, that everybody's put in. Um, you know, Joe Maruszczyk, our superintendent, has been outstanding with uh, communications, as have my um, you know, fellow principals. Um, lots of town hall meetings, a lot of access for, for families. Um, and we just want to make sure that um, we're communicating. So we set out with, with some, some values in terms of making sure that uh, folks knew that we were, you know, families first. Um, let me grab the, because I think they're important. Um, so family and community first, and then and relationships matter. So we wanted families to take care of themselves. We wanted to know that what, what we were focused on first was, um, you know, when it came to uh, academics, it was about relationships right. and then um, supporting all learners and making sure that, that every students were getting their needs met, which is, which is challenging, right? I think this experience also um, uh, shed some lights in some of the cracks. So we're, we're learning about families who may not have the access that we thought they, they did. And we're working, you know, really hard to make sure that those, those cracks are closed. Got it. So Dave, I think you said a couple of things which has, uh, struck me. One is this idea that, you know, in, in school after school, district after district that I talk with, hear from, um, teachers are diving in really hard to sort of ramp up their skill sets in ways that they often were reluctant to before. And so I think it's interesting that when we have to, we can ramp up pretty quickly in education and gain some new skill sets. And I wonder about beforehand, like, why couldn't we build that sense of urgency or understanding earlier so that we actually wouldn't have to do this last minute ramp up? Like that's an interesting question for us in education, right? Yeah, I, I think, um, so I've got a couple different thoughts on that. I think that this was, there's a sense of urgency and then there's actual urgency, right? Okay. And I think in some respects in school, um, people have read Cotter, a little too much and like creating a sense of urgency. So there's always a sense of urgency when um, there really isn't. And for a lot of districts, 
it seems like, well, what we're doing is working. Kids are getting into the school of their choice. Parents are happy. You know, there's, if I'm interested, I'll make this change. If it's going to bring efficiency or transform and do something that I'm interested in or my students are interested in, um, that I, I see teachers willing, really willing to make that change. But it, it's, it's a, teaching's a busy job as it is, right? You know, it's like being in meetings all day. Um, you know, it's not like some other countries where Finland, where you've got, or even just even higher ed, you know, having worked in higher ed, right. you know, the, 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 you know, even the four by you've got time to think and plan and, sure. you know, um, so I think it's, it's a little different there, but I think the biggest difference here is that there wasn't just a sense of urgency, there was urgency mm -hmm. and teachers care deeply about kids and their families. And so when that urgency is there, they dive in. Yeah. And that's a good point. And, you know, it's not like we're going to lose these skill sets later, right? Like we have them now. So it'd be interesting to see what happens next. Well, and I, th I think that's a really interesting point, Scott. I'm, I'm very curious to see what comes out of this experience. You know, we've been going back and forth just about, you know, Neil Postman and, and introducing this crisis. Isn't it going to give you school plus crisis? It's going to give you something mm -hmm. entirely different. But I'm also thinking about, you know, Ty and Kuvin talking about tinkering towards utopia and the grammar of school. So we've got like a fundamental change plus the grammar of school, which one's gonna, it's like, uh, what happens when a, what is it, the irresistible object meets an immovable force? <laughs> yeah, right? Right. Like we're, we're about to find out what, what that's gonna look like. Yeah, no, absolutely. So uh, Dave, so what seems to be working well so far? What seem to be the challenges or sticking points in your community? Um, what's working well is that we're, we're trying to keep everything really super simple and keep tools that are familiar. So we, we've started with strengths, started with what we know the students are familiar with. Um, so getting like a simple uh, learning management system, making sure that it's either um, Google Classroom or Seesaw, so, so things that teachers are familiar with and they can support each other. Um, and then focusing on um, tools for asynchronous learning. So, um, you know, we're um, Screencastify was kind enough to offer uh, a generous uh, free trial for teachers. So we're using that to film some lessons, uh, explain everything I just did a PD session on. Um, and then we're also using Flipgrid to get that uh, asynchronous vir um, virtual conversations. And I think what's working is that we're taking a really flexible approach. Um, so we're gonna try these and then figure out uh, what's working and then what, what do we need to adjust and what new, new needs emerge. Okay. And what's, where seem to be the challenges right now? Where are the sticking points? Um, the challenge, so logistically, um, you know, while Massachusetts is going to remote learning, I think uh, the natural inclination to, in our district, is more of a virtual learning just because we have access to the device, uh, mm -hmm. devices, or at least generally speaking. I think the challenges now are um, helping to manage and support those dev devices virtually making sure that we know that everybody has what they need, mm -hmm. um, finding out where those gaps exist, and then um, you know, supporting parents during this transition because the, the burden is, is falling heavily on them and making sure that what we're doing um, is, is within the dynamics of what's reasonable, particularly keep in mind that we're in the middle of a crisis. It's not like we just shifted to, to the virtual. I mean, remote learning in a crisis. Right. Uh, Dave, talk for a minute about grades K through four, because you said they weren't one-to-one. -one. So how are you working with those students and families? Yeah, so I think that those have been the most active folks on our professional development sessions. Um, you know, if I had to, you know, balance that probably like uh, 65, 35 with, with elementary teachers. Um, but, you know, so what we're doing is we're trying to find ways for them first to connect with their kids. So we started with Zoom. So what's a way to have like a virtual conference call? Um, we're also, we also sent out mass communications to families about um, asking about their internet access and their iPads. And then, you know, I've got one of my colleagues, Sam O'Neill, um, young energetic guy who's like at the school, to, uh, if he's not delivering devices, He's, you know, at the school there for pickup. Um, so we're, we're constantly trying to support families who need that. Um, once we got them onboarded with Zoom, so how do we manage your classes? Um, how do you share work? How do you collect work? Um, so Seesaw, which I think is a pretty powerful tool, even, you know, be, beyond K4, um, is one popular one. But we're also using it as an opportunity 
um, in our, our three and four level to get them ready for middle school, which is you know predominantly Google Classroom. So teachers are experimenting there. So getting them used to you know the classwork feature, how to use the, the discussions, uh, scheduling posts, just the logistics of uh, that piece. Um, grading we're not so worried about. I think we've taken a lead from you know uh, higher ed. So thank you for for going to the, the pass fail. Um, because I think that's a big concern for families, right? Sure. That, that, well, how is this going to look on the transcripts? So you all leading the way has helped. Um, so now we're just focused on feedback. So how do we help students take whatever work that they're doing and make it better? Awesome. And again, that'll be another skill set that we hopefully can take into the future in terms of focusing more on feedback than the grade, which would be great. Yeah. Um, we're heading into our last minute here or so. Uh, anything else you want to share, Dave? Um, I, I just want to just share uh, gratitude for the my colleagues in the community um, and how we've stepped up and um, you know put kids at the center. Um, I, I also um, I don't know if you put it in the show notes, but I think every educator should read um, that uh, revised syllabus from um, that professor from UNC Chapel Hill. I'm, I'm blanking on his name. I'll send it to you, Scott. But um, but basically, nobody asked for this. Um, and that we're all trying to muddle our way through and that the more we can do it with humility and empathy, uh, I think the better off we're all going to be and the stronger that we're going to be as a community moving forward. So yeah, gratitude and, and empathy. Yeah, absolutely. All right. We're going to sign off on this episode of the Coronavirus Chronicles. It's been great <laughs> to hear about MERSD's work. Thank you, Dave. And Thanks, Scott. Uh, I appreciate it. Well, stay tuned.